a slice of life comedy about a quirky teen boy in a small Idaho town. I fully get why people do not connect with Napoleon Dynamite. It, along with every character in the movie, beats to its own drum. The pacing allows room to breathe. The score is mostly just ambient noise of nature, and the actual songs that are in the movie are all underappreciated indie songs that were mostly unknown at the time that this came out. The jokes are subtle, and nothing really ever happens. But if you are in the right mood, or if you are on the right brain wavelength, Napoleon Dynamite is quietly one of the funniest movies ever made. This is the first feature-length movie by director Jared Hess, and it was co-written by him and his wife Jerusha. The script on its own is cute, but I'm not sure that I would call it funny. What makes it funny is the delivery of the lines by the absolutely perfect cast. What I find interesting is that the only actor in this who was really known at the time was Diedrich Bader from The Drew Carey Show. And out of every character in the movie, he's the one who doesn't feel real and doesn't fit in with the rest of the cast. It's almost like Bader is the only actor and everybody else is just a real person. The story centers on the titular Napoleon Dynamite, a lanky, red-haired, high school student who does whatever he wants, he's super confident and has no idea how awkward and nerdy he is, or what makes someone cool, and all of those things mixed together make him really cool in my book. His name is ridiculous, the most absurd name that I can think of, and you know what? There is not a single joke in the movie about his name being weird. That's his name, and no one bats an eye at it. Napoleon has a unique way of talking, one that every young person in the early 2000s copied after seeing this movie. He's constantly just standing there with his mouth open in an interesting way, and his eyes are almost always shut like he's either half asleep or really high. Now, Napoleon's brother Kip is somehow the polar opposite of Napoleon, but also exactly like him. He is a small adult male with a wispy mustache who is way too confident and spends most of his days and nights in online chat rooms. Napoleon's best friend Pedro is a quiet Mexican boy with a mustache who has a crush on the most popular girl in school. Now Napoleon and Pedro's friend group is rounded out by Deb, a photographer who sells charm bracelets. And who can forget Uncle Rico, the Tupperware selling wannabe alpha male who loves steak and can't get over a football game that he played back in 1982. Now, each scene introduces Napoleon, Kip, Uncle Rico, Pedro, or Deb into some quirky situation. There aren't actually a lot of traditional jokes in this, but I laugh really hard all the way throughout it. I think not having traditional jokes actually helps the movie. It doesn't date it to 2004. In fact, nothing really dates it to 2004. There are cassette tapes and tube TVs. Nobody has cell phones. We do hear a Jamiroquai song, and there are internet chat rooms, so I guess it has to take place in the late 90s, early 2000s. But again, not knowing exactly when this takes place just makes it age like fine wine. It's as fresh today as it was 20 years ago. Now, as far as what is actually funny, kind of hard to say. Uh, a lot of it is the intensity that John Heater brings to the role of Napoleon Dynamite. There are a couple of scenes of him getting slammed into a locker by a bully. Nothing else happens in the scene, just Napoleon standing alone. Kid walks by, pushes him in a locker. For some reason, it's hilarious. Not because I want Napoleon to get pushed into a locker. It's just the way that his body moves and his reaction. Napoleon Dynamite stands on its own. There really is no other movie like it. Now, in my opinion, it is one of the funniest movies of the 2000s, and it's rated PG and is family-friendly. There is no vulgar language or disturbing violence. It's lighthearted and hilarious, which honestly is really hard to pull off. Not only that, because of the non-traditional score, or lack thereof, in all the wide-open spaces of Idaho, there is just a lot of nothing happening, and somehow it's never boring. I would venture to say that this movie is the first time that a lot of people ever saw how beautiful Idaho is. And most people think of Idaho as the state where we get potatoes, but other than a scene with some tater tots, which of course is hilarious, potatoes are never mentioned in Napoleon Dynamite. This is a lightning in a bottle movie. If they remade it today word for word, I bet it just wouldn't work. I like it more every time I watch it. Now, after it came out, I was actually kind of surprised at how many people connected to it. There for a while, you could not leave your house without seeing someone in a Vote for Pedro t-shirt or hearing somebody yell, gosh, in their best Napoleon Dynamite voice 20 years later, and I don't really hear people talking about it as much anymore, which is a shame because I think I actually like it more now than I did when it came out. Drawing a Liger. Extra long phone cords. Helping your friend run for class president. Nerds blocking the beautiful Idaho landscapes. Performing with your classmates. Pulling your rollerblading brother into town on your bike.